You had no authority. None. Mexico City. What were you doing there? Hello, welcome to What the Flick. Christy, Alonzo, Matt, we are all severely underdressed to talk about Spectre. Our dinner jackets are being pressed. That's where they are. But we have a license to review. <laughs> yes, license to thrill. We'll use it if we have to. So um, Matt's going to describe the latest James Bond movie to you. Matt. Yes, uh, latest James Bond movie. Uh, Daniel Craig has come back for his fourth James Bond film. Uh, this one find, finds Bond starting out in Mexico City. Uh, at the Dia de los Muertos festival. Uh, things go pretty crazy right off the bat. Uh, and then we find out that Bond is trying to get to the bottom of a shadowy organization doing shadowy things, uh, which may or may not be called Spectre. Let's watch the trailer. Magnificent, isn't she? Zero to 60 in 3.2 seconds. A few little tricks up her sleeve. Do one more thing for me. What do you have in mind? Make me disappear. Tell me where he is. He's everywhere. You should go there. You're crossing over to a place where there is no mercy. You're protecting someone. Get away from me! Why should I trust you? Because right now, I'm your best chance of staying alive. organization. Do you know what it's called? Its name is Spectre. And do you know who links them all? Me. What took you so long? Is this really what you want? Living in the shadows? Hunting? Being hunted? Always alone. I feel like this is amazing off the top. That whole long tracking shot through the parade and inside the hotel and in the elevator and through the room and out the window and out the rooftops. And it kind of all goes downhill from there. <laughs> <laughs> a little bit, yeah. I, I mean, the, the thing about this movie, I, I will say that it delivers your, your daily minimum requirement of Bond. Like, I, there are enough thrills and enough cool set pieces that you won't leave angry, but it's not, it's certainly coming off of Skyfall, it feels like a little bit of a letdown. Yeah, that's part of the problem. I wonder, like, if this were just on its own, right? Mm. If Skyfall didn't exist, would this seem, like, better. disappointing? Yeah, I think yeah. it would seem better. Yeah. I think the challenge with Skyfall is that Skyfall is, is one of the first Bond movies where we've really gotten this emotionally powerful character arc. Uh, it's really moving in an emotional standpoint, whereas all the rest of the Bonds, they kind of flirt with that, but it's more just kind of fun. And this one, you know, Skyfall is really heavy that way. This one's kind of going backwards, and which is fine, right? I, everybody wants to see the fun, goof, you know, if not goofy, like over the top. The action here is, I think, some of the best action we've seen in any of the Daniel Craig Bond films. It's nutty. The helicopter thing is nutty. The helicopter thing. Two helicopters. <laughs> right. You can't have just one. Right. And the airplane and, you know, the, the various chase scenes and the various fight scenes. You know, the fight scene between Daniel Craig and Dave Bautista is awesome. That's it really, really well done action, but kind of at the cost of character development. And when you start to put that into this movie... You know, a lot of the complaints I think that I'm hearing about this movie is that it's too long. And yeah, it's like you could drop a lot of like the character stuff where you're supposed to feel another arc for Bond. Like, all right, come on, can we just get back to the fights, please? Well, I, I mean, I remember it being such a big deal when Quantum of Solace came out that, oh, wow, we're directly referencing what just happened in Casino Royale. Like, usually right. the Bond movies are sort of these discrete mm -hmm. units of entertainment, whereas they were, they were giving him an arc, you know, and, and each movie fed into the next one. Which is a cool idea and, and I think a, a way to do this. The thing with this one is that the plot tries to tell you, aha, all this time, this and this and this and all the previous movies were actually intentional and tied together. But none of it feels like an aha moment. It kind of feels like, oh, all right, if you say so. Well, you know, but, they, I, but they want you to have an aha moment. Yeah, they, they want it, supposed yeah. to be one. But it doesn't, right. it doesn't play that way. You Except, know? That, well, the other problem is, like, if you want to have the aha moment, 
maybe don't be doing a James Bond story where you're kind of hitting the same notes that every movie and every story has done before. Yeah, yeah, there's that. Also, but it's, it's this weird kind of like time-space continuum thing, right? Where Casino Royale was a prequel, an origin story. A reboot something, right? yeah. And then, so those movies have their arc. All the Daniel Craig movies have their arc, but now they're also trying to blend that timeline in with the Bond stuff we already knew, and like they're all meeting each other somewhere <laughs> in the future I think, or the past. I think, I, don't know. I think we're now getting closer to like the vintage super spy James Bond with the gadgets and stuff, and you know, four movies in, you know, 20 something missions in for this Bond. Like, okay, now Q's making the gadgets you kind of expect, and I think we're starting to see elements. You know, this felt like almost that they were trying to do a Roger Moore type movie. It's right? not that like, silly. It's not that no. silly, but it's certainly lighter than any of the Daniel Craig Bond movies. Having I think said that, this that one go ahead. Has, has got a bit of a wink to it, uh, more so than we've seen in any of the other three films prior to this one. Uh, and that's when it works best. When it's at its lightest and just focusing on being an action movie, it's great. You know, it does kind of feel like a greatest hits of the mm -hmm. Bond franchise. There's elements that come in that we've seen in various movies before, and it all kind of works, right? It all works fine, but compared to Skyfall, we're like, yeah, oh, right. okay, this yeah, is... Fine right. is sort of my comeback word on this one. Right. It's, like, it's fine. It's, right. it's Having, fine. But we, we come to expect more, and I feel like Daniel Craig is not as enthused, even if we didn't know all the stuff he was saying about how this movie kicked my ass and I would never do another one or whatever. Like, you get the sense that he's just not passionate about it. Like, the... And maybe it's the script too. Maybe there isn't the depth available to him here that there was in, in previous bonds that he's been in. I don't know. I, I just feel like I hate to use the word phoning it in when he's like dangling off of a helicopter over <laughs> Mexico City, but um, well, I don't I, know. I think also, you know, Skyfall gave him a really great villain to play off of. And the villain here is off screen for large yeah. chunks of the movie and is this sort of shadowy, shadowy figure. Right? Exactly. <laughs> I, I will say this. Um, you know, if you have forgotten what happened in Quantum of Solace, because I did, hmm. uh, you might go back and read the Wikipedia page first just to kind of brush up on that plot because you will be expected to know it. It will, it will be it will, it will matter again. My main memory of Quantum of Solace was that they built this like giant modern cool as shit hotel in the middle of the desert just to blow it up. Yes. Oh right. That's yeah. the only memory I have of right. Quantum of Solace. Did, right. did anything else happen? Right. They, go to the, they go to the opera. There was a big <laughs> opera. <laughs> they go to the opera but they they uh, they blow up that hotel because it runs on hydrogen. Okay. Right, and so it's super explosive. All right, so this so, is sort of eh. no smoking. Yeah. yeah, I mean it's it's not a bad bond, but no, we, we know that there is better available to us. My now. biggest complaint about this movie, and I, I'm trying, to, I'm going to try and say this without spoiling anything, but there is a story element to this movie that directly mimics one of the spy spoof movies. Okay. And it really, <laughs> really bothers me. I'll like, just say that. Really, like that's what you guys are doing. So I want to mention really fast, um, Monica Bellucci is dazzling in like one scene, one or two right. scenes. Two scenes maybe, yeah. Would love to have seen more of her. It's nice to see, a, I hate to use Bond girl as a phrase, but a Bond woman who is age appropriate for mm. Bond and, and they have a very sexy, steamy scene together. Leia to do. It's fun. Yeah. It's fun. <laughs> But, but the thing with the clothes, though, how does she have a gown to wear on the train? I shouldn't even ask these questions. Oh right? yeah, don't even don't even go down that rabbit hole. Where does the hole. dinner jacket well, come from? Well, you know, I, 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 my big disappointment is that Leia Seydoux works in this big glass box on the top of a mountain, which is kind of like the 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 the, the lair in Honor Her Majesty's mm -hmm. Secret Service, and then no ski chase. Like, why yeah. take Bond to the top right. of the mountain and then let him take the funicular down? Like, there I want a is, goddamn ski chase. He finds his own way down. <laughs> yeah. He finds his own Bondy way down. Okay, so what are our numbers then? I give it a 6.8. It's not terrible. It's just sort of, it's mid-level Bond for sure. Yeah, I have to give it a 007. Ooh, Ooh. aren't you fancy? Um, I'm giving it a 6.7, so our average is 6.8. Uh, and it's about 63% on the tomato meter right now. Okay. It's fine. Bye. <laughs>